The world of horror would forever be changed in the late 1960s with the classic horror film, Night of the Living Dead. The film was written by John Russo and George Romero. Soon after this film, they would go their separate ways, but remain amicable and friendly. George Romero would go on to create one of the most seminal classics again as well with Dawn of the Dead. John Russo would then go on to pen a novel for his own sequel, Return of the Living Dead, which would soon become a major motion picture. But as history would see fit, the film that we would get would be completely different from John Russo's novel with Dan O'Bannon coming in with his own pitch. John Russo would have his chance again in the Living Dead series when he would come on to produce Children of the Living Dead in the early 2000s. And the film that would ensue would not go the way he wanted. Children of the Living Dead is something else. And quite frankly, it's about time we dive into a dumpster on this channel. I can't think of a better way to start than Children of the Living Dead. To get you in the groove of things with this movie, let's talk about Children of the Living Dead from behind the scenes. Tom Savini, one of the most legendary makeup artists involved with some of the greatest horror films of our time, and John Russo, one of the most legendary undersung heroes in the world of horror, the writer of Night of the Living Dead alongside George Romero. Guy who is responsible for shaping horror with his movie Night of the Living Dead for generations to come. This is his opening thoughts on Children of the Living Dead, taken from the Return of the Living Dead complete history book. I hate Children of the Living Dead, which is one of the worst movies ever made. I worked with the screenwriter on five revisions and finally the script was getting to be pretty good. I was supposed to have total creative control over the production, including the hiring and firing. But as soon as her father put up the money, Karen Wolf went back to her original script and refused to change a word. So all of my work as a producer and the person who got people such as Jerry Gurgley, Vince Guastini, Bill Hensman, Tom Dubunsky, and Tom Savini to come on board went down the drain. It is one of the worst experiences of my long career and I hate getting blamed for it. So that should set the tone for Children of the Living Dead. Now, I'm not going to be one of those people that says, this movie is bad, don't see it. Quite the opposite, quite frankly. I think you need to see a train wreck every once in a while. It's good to put things into perspective. And Children of the Living Dead is going to be the perfect movie for you to watch and just be like, holy sh- Let me set up the opening sequence for you. Imagine you're watching this cheap-ass movie and you can tell that it's bright daylight. It is lunchtime out in this field with Tom Savini, who's actually in really good shape. He's kind of built like an action star. Running, jumping, gunning around zombies. He's jumping on the hoods of cars. He's a little bit of hope was in this opening sequence, which makes it all the funnier. And there's this weird filter on the screen, and it's like they're trying to make it look like night. And it looks as cheap as this. Yeah, it's like a pre-select night filter that they put on the screen with this chase scene going on. Now imagine, within five minutes of the same sequence, it's just gone. Gone. It's gone. It's not that it faded up. It's not that it faded down. It is gone. They just decided, screw the filter. We're going to continue this scene like it's 1 o'clock in the evening. What in the hell? That is the setup and the tone of Children of the Living Dead. Like I said, the funny thing about this movie is the opening sequence is actually almost, almost, almost kind of cool. Tom Savini is like this little engine that could in the beginning. He's running, jumping, gunning down zombies, which all look so terrible. Just a little dirt on their face. And he's going to get killed because of our main villain in this movie, Abbott Hayes, who is a child murderer, is resurrected back to life during this plague of zombies. So Tom Savini has a cop who is his partner during all this, and he's too lazy to climb a ladder to help back up his partner. So guess who dies in this movie? You think the lazy cop? No. The only shred of hope we had. Tom Savini is gutted and killed. And we never see him again. The only other bit of money that I think was put into this was the actual makeup for Abbott Hayes. He actually has makeup on like a lot of the zombies in this movie. I, I gotta say, I don't think the majority of people in this film had their SAG cards. This is certainly like a one camera movie, line after line from horrible actors. Horrible. Horrible. I, I mean, that's bad. But does it have that bad charm? I wouldn't even say that. It's almost bolsterous in how bad it is. It has no bones about it. This movie is terrible. The acting is garbage. But the funny thing is there's some of the people in this movie that really are just giving it hell. And God bless them for it. They're just not actors. There's this one sequence where the cop is fighting with this girl. And you could tell they are really into it with having this back and forth. Like this is like the days of our lives soap opera or something. And um, boy oh boy. Yeah, 
I'm not going to make this too long because quite frankly talking about Children of the Living Dead and seeing Children of the Living Dead are two totally different things. And I really would love for you to check out this movie. It's just got to be seen to be believed. Like I said, I'm not going to be one of those people that tells you don't watch this movie, it's bad. I'm going to be the guy that tells you, you got to see it to believe it. Children of the Living Dead has some of the most legendary names attached to it, and it's one of the most legendary bad Living Dead movies ever. This is a far cry from Night of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Land of the Dead, Survival of the Dead, maybe even Necropolis and Rave to the Grave, which we're going to talk about soon. So buckle up. We're going there. So to wrap up this review for Children of Living Dead, I'm going to say this. It's cheap. It's bad. It's lazy. It's poorly edited. It's poorly shot. Check it out. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, and music, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month.